firstly in terms of uh, digestion and nutrition these microbes help break down complex feed components um, that the chickens own enzyme can digest efficiently uh, for example certain bacteria ferment polysaccharides and produce certain fatty acids which provide additional energy to the birds and other uh, other functions this not only improves nutrient absorption but can also enhance uh, growth rates then there is the immune system aspect uh, the gut microbiota interacts closely with the chicken's immune cells essentially training the immune systems to recognize and respond to pathogens uh, effectively Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Poultry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm our host Dr. Fatima Alikari from Mississippi State University. Um, today, as a matter of new guest and a new face, we have Dr. Yadav Bajgai from University of Central Queensland, Australia. Dr. Bajgai, welcome to the show. Thank you, Pratima, for having me. Thank you for uh, being here. We're very excited to learn about, especially a very cutting edge technology today about gut microbiota in poultry. Um, Dr. Bajigai, could you explain a little bit about your current role and what you do over in the university there? I'm a research fellow at Central Queensland University um, in the Depart uh, Institute of Future Farming Systems here. Uh, our research focused mainly on gut health microbial uh, genomics and host microbe interactions uh, we are focusing mainly on chicken poultry yeah but we also work on other areas uh, ruminants uh, pigs and some human health aspects as well but we're focusing on poultry Thank you. Yeah, we're excited to learn about poultry today and especially understanding these dynamics of uh, intestinal microbiota. Here, um, I have a question to start, um, which I guess everybody is wondering about the same questions throughout um, the time in the production and performance of the poultry. So understanding this gut microbiota has become very increasingly important in recent years. Um, and also, could you explain why studying these um, different intestinal microbiota is so crucial for the overall bird health and their productivity. How should we incorporate, why should we incorpor incorporate that in our studies? It's really fascinating when you, when you, when you dive into it. Uh, you know, the gut microbiota in chickens, uh, it's just not a random collection of microbes hanging out. Uh, it's more like an actively functioning uh, metropolis of microorganisms, I would say, that play a pivotal role in birds' overall health and productivity. Uh, firstly, in terms of uh, digestion and nutrition, these microbes help break down complex feed components um, that the chickens own enzyme can digest efficiently. Uh, for example, certain bacteria ferment polysaccharides and produce certain fatty acids, which provide additional energy to the birds and other, uh, other functions. This not only improves nutrient absorption, but can also enhance uh, growth rates. Then there is the immune system aspect. Uh, the gut microbiota interacts closely with the chicken's immune cells, essentially training the immune systems to recognize and respond to pathogens uh, effectively. Uh, early colonization with beneficial microbes uh, can strengthen gut barrier functions and reduce inflammation. Uh, this means the birds are less susceptible to infections and diseases, which is crucial for their well-being. Right. Protection against pathogen is another critical function. Uh, Benefit microbes uh, can outcompete harmful bacteria by occupying needs there in the gut environment, which is uh, we call as competitive exclusion. Uh, for instance, introducing specific probiotic strains into the diet right. can significantly reduce pathogen colonizations. Uh, another important aspect is there is growing evidence that the gut microbiota can even influence behavior and eastern responses in chickens yeah. that hinting at a gut-brain axis similar to what's uh, been studied in humans. Right. Well, this area is still emerging, but it's, it's quite fascinating to consider how these microbiota might impact birds' overall behavior and resilience to stress. Uh, so it's just not about digestion, it's complex system influencing immunity, disease resistance, growth, and possibly even behavior. So we study intestinal microbiota 
essentially exploring how these microbial community influence everything from digestion uh, and nutrient absorption to immune response and behavior. Excellent. I think you explained overview of why this has become very important and um, there is more to understand and especially you, you mentioned about the gut brain axis. Uh, now, yeah, we have heard that in a human it's coming to the chicken and of course these are related and we have seen that uh, yeah. most of the work that a part of the work that your lab has been doing, that's, that's great. Um, again, switching a gear a little bit on the, okay, that's an importance about the microbiota, but there are some tools to analyze this microbiota. So for the viewers or listeners today, could you share like how like researchers researchers use these various tools um, to explore this complex world of microbes? So what technologies are currently available? Um, if you can just share, I know it's, I don't want to be extensive, but a little bit on that side. Yes, of course. Uh, there are different technologies available um, that we can divide into different categories. For example, you have different sequencing uh, technologies that high throughput sequencing. Uh, even for sequencing, we can divide into applicant sequencing, for example, 16S RNA uh, gene sequencing. Then we have metagenomic sequencing, where we sequence all the nucleic acid material present there. Then in the two-study functional aspect, we have metatranscriptomics. Uh, we have metabolomics, where we study the uh, metabolites present in there. We can sequence and study proteins, we call proteomics. Then we have different types of imaging and localized methods uh, like immunohistochemistry where we detect uh, proteins in tissues uh, to localize microbial metabolites or host proteins. Uh, we have uh, fluorescence in situ hybridizations where we use fluorescent probes to visualize and localize specific microbes within the gut tissues. Uh, then there are different experimental models we can use to study microbiota. For example, neurobiotic animal models, which use germ free or specifically colonized uh, animals to study the effects of particular microbes on the host or their uh, role there in control environment. Right. Uh, and in recent times, we have just started uh, to use organoids, which are 3D animal um, organ models, uh, in vitro organs. Yeah. We, we can use even use the intestinal organoids to study uh, the roles of this uh, microbiota and roles of intestinal health. Uh, and then to complement all these technologies, we have several uh, computational and bioinformatics tools which we must use uh, to make sense out of these um, data, we vast amount of data we generate from the this multi-omics technologies. That's great. Um, given this complexity of the gut ecosystem of this poultry, for example, because we're talking about poultry world, why is selecting these right technologies is very important? Like, I feel like there has been not that much of education and not everybody can do that's the reason to microbiome study, right? You have to understand. Do you think there is a need to select the right tool? Yes, yes, that's a great question, Pratima, and it's something I think about a lot. You see, um, the gut ecosystem is incredibly integrated. It's a dynamic community where microbes interact, not just with each other, but also with the, with the host physiology, diet, and environment. So it's a very important to choose the right tools. Different technologies offer uh, different insights. For example, 16 years RNA gene sequencing has been widely used because it's relatively affordable and accessible. It helps us to identify which bacteria are present, but it has some limitations. It doesn't provide the resolution we need to identify these specific species or strains. And the presence of uh, multiple copies of 16S genes in some bacteria can, uh, in fact, skew the abundance estimates we do with the 16S data. There are also variables that can affect the results, like selection of primers, uh, different variable reasons which can introduce biases and affect the com comparability of results across the different studies. Mm -hmm. That's why we are more switching to us now metagenomics and uh, even functional studies. Uh, when we see the microbiome, microbiota, this vary a lot. But functional aspects is we found that it's relatively stable than uh, populations. So we are more uh, now focusing towards metagenomics and metatranscriptomics and other functional studies uh, besides um, relying on traditional, it's not traditional, but 
um, 16 years RR engine technologies. Excellent, Dr. Baj, guys. I think integrating these uh, technologies sometimes could give um, more, yes. more insights. Proven on the farm, trusted on the plate, let our technologies help make your production goals a reality. Learn from the experts how carbohydrates can improve nutrient utilization, gut health technologies differ by type, and how liquid smoke can light your bird performance on fire. Carry isn't just leading in animal agriculture, we're innovating it. Yes, Dr. Bajgai, I think we may have to have another episode of just kind of follow up a little bit on the what specifically you do in the lab. No problem, we can do that. I have a kind of last question before we kind of wrap up here. What are the, some of the main challenges though when you study these microbiota? What do you see in the live bird production and when you relate these data to the microbial population? I think one of the main hurdles um, in, in studying the microbiota is the sheer variability of the microbiota itself. Yeah. The gut ecosystem is highly dynamic and influenced by multitude of factors like diet environment genetics or even the time of the day yeah this variability makes it difficult to draw broad conclusion or create standard interventions that work across the board um, another significant challenge lies in the methodologies we use as i just said that we have the limitations in the methodologies different analysis pipeline bioinformatics tools uh, can give different results or e even reference, reference database um, can yield different results from the same data set leading to potential inconsistencies or biases. Uh, therefore, standardization of microbiota study to make the results reproducible or comparable across the study, I think is the, uh, is the mo like most pressing challenge. So with this context, uh, we must, I think, urgently call for a global collaboration to develop and adopt uh, standardized methods in microbiota research. Uh, by harmonizing our approaches, we can ensure that the vast amount of data being generated is reliable, reproducible, and comparable. Uh, this will enable us uh, to build a robust foundation of knowledge that can drive practical applications and innovations. Uh, and ultimately benefiting animal health and industry sustainability. Right, Dr. Bajka, I, I completely agree with what you said. And thank you so much for sharing your insights into the uh, gut microbiome and dynamics of this intestinal microbiota today in our episode. Um, I would like to thank you so much for again um, coming and talking, sharing about some of your research. Um, so is there anything that you want to say before we wrap up? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Pratima. It's my pleasure. You're very welcome. So, um, hey, everyone. So we need to wrap up the show for today. And I will see you again for next time in the next episode of Nutrition Black Belt. Until then, you all take care. Bye now.